Hello Namibia, welcome to our second episode of the Agriculture Trade Policy Talk, brought to you by the Agriculture Trade Forum. I'm your host, Maria Emanuel. In this second episode, we sit down with Mr. Ruli Fenter. He is the Chief Executive Officer at the Agriculture Farmers Union, also known as the NAU. He talks to us about the role of the NAU and its role in the agriculture sector. Thank you, Maria. Um, the NAU is a, is a members-based organization. I think we need to state that it's voluntary, voluntary members. Um, it was established already in 1940s. We are celebrating this year its 75th birthday. Um, so it's an old established organization and uh, which have a long history. Um, and more than 60 individual farmers associations are affiliated, individual affiliated to the Nehmer Agricultural Union and that's now individual farmers associations which is organized in their own regions across across the title deed areas. Um, which is addressing their local issues, their uh, regional issues, while the NAU is focusing on, on the national issues. Um, so I think our base is the, the farmers themselves, the producers themselves, through their farmers associations, they are members and affiliated to the, to the NAU. Um, our, our prime focus is to represent uh, title deed producers in the country and represent that on all the different levels which is necessary. Our vision, uh, our long-term vision is simply, is a very simple vision, but it's very difficult and, and challenging to implement and that is to create an enabling environment for this individual primary producer to conduct business, to grow uh, their sector, to grow their business while they are farming um, in, that, in Namibia. And we have, we have four uh, what we call critical success factors or pillars under how we want to achieve this vision over time. Um, the first one is, is capacity building, that include capacity building of our members through leadership development, life skills development, through farmer employees, there's different programs attached to that. So that's the first one. Secondly, it's about creating synergy in the industry. We believe that if we can work together with all stakeholders and achieve our, our shared goals, our shared dreams, we will be successful. The third one also uh, is profitability at farm level. We need to be profitable, we are all running a business and if we are not profitable we will not have an agricultural sector. And lastly, very important to us is to, have, to utilize our natural resources in a sustainable manner, uh, to improve our uh, natural rangelands, um, to work on the water utilization to ensure that that is a sustainable utilization and to improve in this challenging climate changing times that we can keep producing uh, on a sustainable basis. How can we sustainably grow the agriculture sector in the next 10 years? What would be the best model looking at our condition? I think the first thing you need to remember is that we have two main groups of industries in the agricultural sector. First of all, the net e exporting industries, uh, which include now, as we all know, beef and small stock and goats and grapes and charcoal and swakara. That's the net exporting industries where we, we are consuming less than what we are producing in Namibia. That's the one hand, and interestingly, that is accounting for about 75 to 80 percent of the income of a primary producer, is coming from the net exporting industries. Uh, on the other hand, also very important, the net importing industries, where we are not able to produce as e uh, e uh, enough for what we are consuming in Namibia, and that includes, as we all know, the grains, the vegetables, the poultry, the pork, as well as the dairy. Um, so that is two different sectors and two different types of industries in Namibia and we need two strategies. We cannot have an overarching strategy for the agricultural sector. We need to focus on the, on the development needs of these two, two different groups. While we have the exporting industries, in order to grow this sector we need to open up markets. We, need to, we are reliant on, ex, on the international markets, on the regional markets to sell our products. While on the, on the net importing industries, we need to create a legal framework to stabilize the sectors, to help them grow, to reduce import substitution, to reduce money flowing out of the country. So that, that is the two strategies we need to focus on to handle both of these sectors. Maria, as I've mentioned that uh, the dairy sector is part of the net importing industries we are consuming now 
about double what we are able to produce in Namibia. Um, and the dairy sector is the only, only net importing industry which ha don't have a legal framework uh, to stabilize itself. If you compare the, the grains, the poultry, the pork, all the others, the vegetables, all the others are, have a legal framework to stabilize it under either the Meat Industry Act, the Economic Industry Act, the Import and Export Control Act. That is all providing the stabilization of these industries except the dairy industry. So for the first part of the sector is that we need a legal framework for the dairy sector to stabilize and to, to grow in future. The current state of the dairy sector is extremely bad, extremely low level production, primary production of milk have decreased from about 24 million liters per annum in the 2018 to an expected 12 million in 2021. So there's a 50% reduction in milk output, primary milk supply production in the last three years. And that shows you in what severity the industry is. It was a stable industry, but this last three years was just disastrous for the industry. So coming back, we need a legal framework uh, for this sector to be stabilized. Uh, and, and we need to do it with government, with the backing of government, with the political will of government, otherwise the sector will simply close down and all the, all the dairy products will need to be imported from outside. Uh, so that, that in short I think is the most important factor we need to focus on. Now. biggest opportunity in the next 10 years is still lying in the small stock sector and the sheep producing industry. We know and through, through a lot of in, uh, historical information that uh, production declined with 50%, more than 1 million heads of, uh, of lamb were marketed in the early 2000s and we now at 300 to 400,000 and there's the definite potential to go back to that, to that 1 million lambs per, per annum. Um, but we need to focus and creating uh, investor surety for the farmers to invest back in the sector and that is by abolishing the current uh, the small stock marketing scheme was already there since uh, the beginning of 2000 that is hampering investment and the farmers are moving back out of that industry so if we can we can focus on that we can create jobs on on in the primary sector from the NAU and from livestock producers, we are busy with a study currently also to see what is the alternative markets internationally for sheep meat as well, for lamb, whether that's in the Middle East or in Europe or USA or China, to create an alternative uh, value chain for producers, while not only live exports to neighboring countries, but also maybe a value-added product. But it's very important that this value-added product in international markets must be able to compete with the, the regional markets uh, for the primary, in, primary producer to invest back in the sector. So that's one. The small stock sector can within 10 years double its, double its output and that means double uh, employment on, on, uh, in primary production. The second one I just want to mention very quickly is also the potential is there for the cattle sector to also double. We have seen um, and we know that we have 40 million hectares of bush encroached land in Namibia. And if we can restore the balance back to between grass and bush in this country, on this 40 million hectares, we can double the, the cattle output. And the, the reason is simple. If you are addressing and restoring that balance between grass and bush, you are, you are able to increase the stocking rate on, on every hectare of land which you have uh, restored the balance. And if you are restoring the, st the stocking rate and your management is up to, up to par, you are doubling production per hectare. Your output, your yield per hectare is also doubling. So that is this enormous potential. I think the first and uh, the lowest hanging fruit is in the small stock sector. Thank you, thank you so much Roli for joining us. Um, yeah, it was a pleasure and this was very informative. Thank you Maria, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. In the last segment, we take a look at the marketing of sheep over a 20-year period from 2000 to 2020. Sheep in Namibia are marketed formally at three levels, namely export abattoirs, local butchers, and live sheep on hoof. Sheep marketed at export abattoirs since 2000 to date, it's around 10 million sheep. Those marketed at local abattoirs, about 1.4 million sheep while live on hoof marketing is about 7 million sheep. The total marketed over the period 
mentioned is about 19 million. In terms of value, sheep exported live on hoof between 2000 and 2020 is recorded to be worth 3 billion Namibian dollars, while imports over the same period is worth 87 million Namibian dollars. Interestingly, sheep slaughtered at local abattoirs has doubled in the last five years, while slaughtering at export abattoirs has declined by half over the same period. The sheep marketing scheme implemented by government in 2004 had influenced marketing of sheep in the country over the 20-year period. The policy was set aside in July 2019 under the Economic Summit decisions as approved by Cabinet. To date, the industry awaits government policy directive on sheep marketing, which could stabilize the growth of the sector and attract much needed investment and reinvestment. What are the export destination of sheep? 98% of sheep exported by Namibia goes to South Africa, while less than 1% has been exported to Botswana in the last year. And that's it for me. Do subscribe and leave your comments in the comment box below. See you next time.